So a healthy nutritional status, it's basically, it's nothing but a combination of all the foods, beverages that one eats over a period of time. And all the food and all the beverages, all the food choices will take place. So by choosing a, a healthy diet, what you're actually doing is you help in maintaining a good, healthy body weight, ensuring that women are actually taking a good sufficient of nutrients, which helps in reduce as a chronic uh, risk of chronic disease conditions. So it's very important to meet the increased daily nutrient requirements during pregnancy without a marked increase of the energy intake. This is something one have to remember. So I it was already telling you, right, uh, that... Uh, pregnant mothers will need additional calories during uh, calories during pregnancy so we can divide see basically it is 270 days in conception which you can divide as first trimester that is zero to three months second trimester is three to six months third trimester is last three months before the delivery so during the first trimester uh, the women will have to consume i mean the pregnant women will have to consume extra 150 calories per day for example, if they are, uh, if they, uh, if the recommended allowance of uh, uh, calories is two thousand calories, then during the first three months they will have to consume two thousand and one hundred and fifty calories per day. Because uh, the first three months it will be a little difficult because the mothers will have nausea, vomiting, morning sickness, and there are also chances of having hyperemesis gravida, which is nothing but excessive vomiting. And they tend to lose a lot of weight and there can also be dehydration, which is why 150 calories per day should be sufficient. Whereas in the second and third trimester, they will have to uh, increase the calories to 350 calories per day plus what they take. So, so similarly, like if their if uh, calorie needs are 2000 calories per day, they will have to consume 2350 calories per day to meet their requirement during the second and third trimester. So this will be the caloric requirement for the pregnant mothers. Now, uh, we spoke about calories. Now, let's see why protein is also important. Protein plays a very important role for, uh, you know, plasma, uh, development of the plasma and enlargement of the uterus, breast, and formation of the aminoidic fluid. Protein pl plays a very important role in the development, the growth of the child. And the low protein sources, there are vegetarian and non-vegetarian sources. So to just make you understand, I've just given some very sources like eggs, soybeans, milk, almonds, fish meat. Apart from that, a lot of lentils, pulses, all of these contain protein. So it, it doesn't matter what sources, as long as if it's a vegetarian, it's okay. They can consume protein through vegetarian. If the mother is a non-vegetarian, they can have a combination of both vegetarian and non-vegetarian. It's not necessary only vegetarian protein is good, non-vegetarian protein is bad, nothing like that. As long as we are consuming the protein source, it's well and good. So the protein requirement during the second and tr uh, third trimester will be a little higher because uh, there is a need for, you know, forming all the organs and uh, for the development. So during the second trimester, that is from three to six months during pregnancy, the mother will need an additional protein requirement that is 9.5 grams per day. For example, if their requirement is 60 grams, ideally, they will need to have 69.5 grams every day. Whereas in the third trimester, because that's a phase where even more uh, proteins are required. So in that case, they will need 22 grams uh, additional protein per day. So again, if they're ideally going to consume 60 grams per day, they should get a protein of 82 grams per day. A higher protein is required during the third trimester. As I already told you, the other sources were lentils and all the rajma, kidney beans, paneer, the lot of sources of protein. So all of this will help in the growth and development of the child and the placenta. So now fat, it plays a very important role because it's very essential for the brain development and like the DHA, all of this is very important. And also it, it acts as an energy reserve and it also helps in the development of membranes. So per day, uh, the pregnant mothers will need to consume 30 grams and uh, essential fatty acids like omega-3, like walnuts, nuts, fish, all of this is very important for the brain development of the child. So some of the sources of uh, fat can be walnuts, black seeds, chia seeds, fish oil, soya beans, spinach, 
ghee butter all of this can be taken as long as you consume it in home please do not just because i said you can consume uh, you know a lot of uh, just because i said uh, you can consume butter cheese you should not consume too much always moderation is the key and have a lot of dha and epa which is essential for the child's brain development as well so calcium it's very important for the bones and teeth formation apart from that it has a function in blood clotting and it also helps in fetal bone mineralization and also helps in muscle action so calcium is basically it has a lot of functions uh for pregnant mothers they will need 1000 mg of calcium per day so apart from that some of the calcium rich foods can be spinach particularly agatti and milk products or fish uh green leafy vegetables broccoli all of this contain calcium so any dairy source will be helpful uh and for the calcium to absorb in your body you need vitamin d as well so sunlight expo exposure is also important here so let's move on to iron iron is a very important micronutrient because it helps in prevention of anemia and there will be blood loss during pregnancy so it's very important to have adequate uh, iron and during pregnancy the blood volume will increase so a pregnant mother should have a daily dose of i mean should have an iron of 20 mg per day and iron uh, why i'm stressing on iron is because for the first 6 months for the baby the baby will need more iron so the iron stores are being formed during pregnancy which is why there is a higher amount of iron given during pregnancy and uh, after four months usually in any uh, public health centers or anything the mothers are advised to uh, give uh, iron supplements like after four months they usually start with iron and folic acid supplements because they should not have anemia and to avoid during preg i mean avoid the blood loss during pregnancy is very important so some of the sources uh, uh, in iron are there are vegetarian and non vegetarian sources talking about non vegetarian sources there is uh, egg yolk chicken liver spleen uh, kidneys uh, the liver all of this has a very rich source of iron apart from that in uh, uh, vegetarian foods you have the green leafy vegetables dates are not a very good source of iron it has like depends on the type of dates you have iron like from 0.3 to uh, uh, 3.1 it contains but it's not a good source but it is a source of day it's it is a source of iron but not very good and apart from that you can have jaggery you can have all the mint coriander leaves sesame seeds the raisins apricots all these contain iron now the important point about iron that one person has to keep in mind is see as i already told you there are two types of iron one is heme iron and non heme iron okay heme iron is present in all the non vegetarian food products whereas non heme iron is present in vegetarian food products so for the non heme iron to absorb you will need vitamin c so vitamin c basically is present in all your fruits vegetables most of them so you can have some citrus fruits or any fruits that is that are in you know uh, green yellow orange all of these fruits or vegetables will contain vitamin c so that's why people say you can have beetroot you can have orange you can have lime you can have grapes so make sure any fruit can be taken during pregnancy so which helps in absorption of iron and iron absorption can also be eliminated when you consume lot of phytates having tea coffee can also have an inhibition of iron so one person has to be very very careful about this part now vitamin d and vitamin a plays a very important role as i already said vitamin d helps in calcium absorption per day uh, the mothers will need 600 international units so sources would be sunlight exposure milk cereal mushrooms cod liver oil fish liver oil and the reason is it helps in formulation of rhodopsin and it also very, plays a very important role for skin health whereas vitamin a it it plays a very important role in uh, preventing birth defects and per day uh, the mothers pregnant mothers will need 900 micrograms per day and sources of vitamin a carrots liver papaya yellow orange color of vegetables will contain vitamin a so folic acid as i already told you it is ideal to start before conception which is why it as i already told you it helps in uh, preventing ural tube defects congenital anomalies cleft like cleft lip and palate it also helps in preventing urinary tract anomalies and it also helps in reducing intrauterine growth retardation that is intrauterine growth retardation the growth will not be uh, the growth uh, will be well 
if you give folic acid and if there is a deficit of folic acid the growth of the baby will be lesser than what it is expected that is why it is intrauterine growth retardation and there are also chances of a low birth weight baby so per day the mothers will have to consume 570 micrograms per day folate see folic acid should be supplemented before pregnancy for mothers of reproductive age and an important thing that you have to remember is you will have to consume folic acid rich foods like spinach beans peas lentils liver kidney uh, kidney i mean kidney and the sense i meant uh, poultry kidneys and also sunflower seeds all of this contain folic acid apart from that definitely mothers i mean pregnant mothers are taking folic acid supplements as well to meet their requirements zinc uh, zinc helps in a lot of things it plays a very important role for the health so per day 14.5 milligrams per day is rec recommended for consumption it helps in prevent of hypogonadism and it helps in uh, wound healing if there is a deficit of uh, zinc it, it delays the wound healing and it causes babies that's born with low birth weight if the uh, if there is if there's zinc deficient and deficiency of zinc can also cause growth retardation some of the sources of zinc are nut mushrooms legumes meat shellfish and oysters so a maternal diet pattern should be they should have a lot of organic vegetables probiotic milk products uh, it helps in reducing preeclampsia that is uh, hypertension during pregnancy they can reduce the small for gestational age preterm delivery can be avoided congenital malformations can also be avoided if they are going to consume a lot of processed foods like processed meat fat refined products and very less intake of fruits and vegetables and along with that uh, the beverages that are, uh, you know, having sweet, like artificial sweetness, empty calories and fishes that's contaminated with excess of uh, mercury should also be avoided because they have a risk during pregnancy. So a maternal, uh, you know, having a good diet during uh, pregnancy is very, very important. So to understand it better. So it's very important that uh, they should the mother should consume a variety of nutrition nutrition rich foods in all the food groups according to the recommendation, and all fruits, vegetables, whole grains, seafood, eggs, beans, nuts, unsalted nuts and seeds, and fat free products, low fat dairy products as well as lean meats, poultry are considered as nutrition dense if they're prepared with less or unsuch uh, less or little fat and no uh, refined grains and sodium. So salt plays a very important role. Pregnant mothers should not consume a lot of uh, salted foods. That is why I have mentioned that uh, low uh, low salt because uh, the lot of uh, see when you go to the supermarket when you buy a lot of products they are rich in sodium. So make sure that you take uh, nuts which are not salted. And also, it's very important that you limit the intake of calories from added sugars or refined starches and saturated fat as well. So this plays a very important role. And I also, as I already told you, all your uh, beverages like uh, Pepsi, Coke, uh, Limca, all of these contain empty calories, including your sodas, which are non-nutrient substances and are not good in pregnancy. Also, it's very important that uh, have a good, I mean, less intake of sugar, salt, and fats. And that will vary from country to country. However, you have to remember that saturated fats should not increase more than 50 to 30. 5 to 10 percent of daily consumed calories and salt should not be consumed greater than 2.3 grams per day if the mothers are having hypertension and the women of uh, pregnant women should have a physical activity physical activity just because as a physical activity nothing very heavy lifting and all just a normal uh, you know very soft or slow physical activity will do they should not do rigorous physical activity just because i said activity can be done you have to make sure anything that you do you have to do it in moderation so as i already told you uh, uh, all uh, all the adults should aim at at least 150 minutes or 2 hours of moderate intensity physical activity each week or uh, let's say uh, walking or uh, some small activities can be done and definitely smoking and alcohol consumption should be avoided prior to consumption because it can interfere with fertility and ha can have harmful effects even before the mothers are getting pregnant. So this have to be rem remembered. Another thing is the first five weeks plays a very important role in organ development for the child. So having smoking, uh, I mean, uh, influence of smoking and alcohol can have lifelong issues. 
so it's very important that this plays an important role also the it's very important for the father also to have a good healthy diet it's not just the mother the father also should have a good healthy diet should do physical activity as well because the lot of research saying that father's sperm can also cause environmental risk if uh, if they don't have a proper diet even if they're obese it can also have an influence on the diet i mean on the child as well so as i already told it's just a repetition uh, obesity uh, diabetes micronutrient deficiency uh, in males can also affect the quality of the sperm fertility and uh, health of the future offspring so the new nutritional status is very important so we were all talking about pregnant mother all this time the same thing is going to happen for the lactating mother it's just that the energy requirements and the requirements i mean the protein and the other nutrient requirements will only change apart from that it's the same thing so the energy re requirements will be little higher compared to pregnant mothers so the first six months the, the first six months during lactation the mothers will need 600 calories and during the last six months of the lactation they will need additional of 520 calories per day protein requirements during the first six months it will be like plus 17 grams per day for example if it's a 60 gram ideally protein they will need 77 grams of protein per uh, day for first six months whereas in the last six months of lactation 13 grams is ideal enough uh, calcium is a little higher compared to pregnancy it's 1200 milligrams per day iron 23 milligrams per day is recommended zinc is 14.1 milligrams per day Vitamin A is uh, 950 new gram per day, whereas in pregnancy it was 900 new gram per day. Vitamin C is a little higher, do, I mean, during lactation, it's 100 milligrams per day. Vitamin D is the same as pregnant and lactating mother, so there is no need for this. So this is the foundation that we're going to, we have spoke about maternal diet. Now,